Game balance is really hard. Everyone at some point gets the urge to scream about how the devs are stupid and this champion's broken and why do the devs not fix their game, blah, blah, blah. But game devs have an impossible task on their hands. Today, I wanna to talk about statistics and why win rates, pick rates, and other similar stats can be extremely misleading. And brainlessly balancing around these stats can actually hurt your game instead of improving it. Let's not waste too much time and get into the first example, which is this. This is the average kill rates of every killer in a game called Dead by Daylight, that popular asymmetrical multiplayer game that everyone's been talking about for the last six months. These stats come from 2021, and at the time, the newest killer was the Xenobite, aka Pinhead. So look at this, the nurse has a measly 42% kill rate, meaning that she loses the majority of the game she's in. That's terrible, she must be so weak, we should buff nurse, right? WRONG! If you look at any tier list made by any Dead by Daylight content creator, you will see the same handful of killers at the top of that list. And Nurse is right up there at number one almost every time. This discrepancy between what the stats say and what the community says is caused by one simple thing. Nurse is an extremely difficult killer to play. The overwhelming majority of Nurse players are bad at her. They can't use her power effectively. So the statistics will try and tell you that she's weak because her win rate and her kill rate are both low. But most of the games that make up these stats are games played by newer or less experienced nurse players. They bring down the average tremendously. But a good nurse player will completely dominate the game. In fact, nurse is infamously one of the few killers that actually stands a chance in tournament play. If the devs were to blindly obey the stats, they'd find themselves buffing nurse for multiple patches in a row because, oh no, the kill rate, the kill rate. But the reality is, the nurse is perfectly balanced. She just has a very high skill cap, which makes these stats kinda useless. And we can look on the other end of the spectrum and see the exact same thing. The Cenobite has the highest kill rate in the game. Oh my god, he must be the best killer in the whole game, right? No, wrong, again. The Cenobite being the newest killer to the game not only means that nobody really knows how to effectively play them, but also nobody knows how to effectively play against them. And Pinhead has quite a complex power that can slow the game down drastically, so it's unsurprising that people struggle against it, especially newer players and uncoordinated teams. Not to mention that these stats were taken from July to September of 2021, and Pinhead was released on the 7th of September, so his sample size in these stats is much smaller than the other killers. These statistics are only a piece of the puzzle if you want to balance the game, and blindly following them would make the strong killers stronger and the weak killers weaker. The example that made me actually want want to make this video in the first place is from Team Fight Tactics. If we quickly stroll on down to lolchess.gg, a popular stats website for Team Fight Tactics, we can check up on the meta tab to see what apparently are the best comps in the game. Apparently, Six Yordles is one of the best team compositions in the whole game. The comp comes top four a whopping 91% of the time and comes first 31% of the time. Those are some insane stats, right? Of course, it's all bullshit. What did you expect to look at the title of the video? But before I can explain why this is a terrible use of statistics, let me first explain how this six yordle comp actually works. In Teamfight Tactics, you can upgrade units by buying multiple copies of the same unit. If I get three copies, it becomes a two star and it gains a bunch of stats along with this. If I get nine copies of the same unit, I get a three star, which gives it even more stats on top of that. Getting a three star of any unit is much harder than getting the two star of any unit. So obviously these three star units are much more powerful than their two star and one star variants. Now this yordle comp is a re-roll comp. Basically what you're trying to do is three star all of your units. If you three star all six of your yordles, a special seventh yordle unit will start appearing on your bench. His name's Vigar. Vigar is an extremely powerful magic damage carry that completely annihilates an entire enemy board with just one or two items. The only way you can acquire Vigar is by getting all six of your yordles to three star. So bearing that in mind, let's look back at the stats for this comp, shall we? Do you notice anything interesting that might make these stats completely and utterly worthless? Vigar's already on this board. This comp has a 91% top 4 rate if and only if you actually hit Vigar. What this doesn't show you is the win rate and top 4 rate of the comp when you don't manage to hit Vigar. Because from experience, I can tell you that if you play 6 Yordle reroll in any rank above gold, you will probably have a really hard time. 
your board will be terrible and everyone will become much stronger than you and kill you way before you ever manage to get all of your Yordles three-starred. Sure, if you get your Vygar, your board will probably be really strong, but chances are you're not getting that Vygar. In fact, Teamfight Tactics is a really interesting example of this sort of phenomenon because every single win rate on this entire website is assuming that you hit everything on your final board and that you end the game with this same final board. It doesn't account for variations in the comp that might make it stronger or weaker, nor does it account for the augments that you got that game, and it doesn't consider what happens if you try to get this comp and you just don't hit the units. TFT and other games like it have an interesting issue when it comes to these stats, because in isolation, these stats are even more useless than they would be in other games. Of course there are an infinite number of examples of weird quirks of statistics in other games, but the point I want to make is that looking on OP.GG and screaming that your one trick's win rate is low is not a valid reason for the devs to buff your favourite champion. Because so many factors go into making these stats and the devs have to read between the lines to make the right decisions. And some devs do often follow the stats more than they follow their brains, which can lead to some interesting buff and nerf decisions that negatively impact the game. But most devs know for well not to do this. I've got a lot of videos on game balance on my channel and at some point in basically every single one of them I say this exact same thing but I'm gonna say it again anyway. Game balance is really hard. It's so complicated in ways that a lot of players don't really appreciate, and this is just one of the many hurdles that game devs silently battle against to try and make our multiplayer experiences as fun as possible. Thanks for watching.